and welcome. I am Gimba Umar. Tonight, gunmen attack police station in Bayelsa State, kill DPO and three others as police launch manhunt for perpetrators of crime. Taraban plans to state residents protests proposed Ruga settlement in parts of the estate as federal government says program is not limited to herdsmen. And PDP to call over 400 witnesses as parties in the presidential election case. Parties agree on modalities and structure for the hearing of petition filed by its candidate, Al Haji Atiku Abu Bakr. And police in Hong Kong fire tear gas. Dozens of protesters force their way into Hong Kong's Legislative Council on the anniversary of the handover of power from Britain. On business news tonight, the federal government directs MDAs to provide relevant information about financial status of individuals and companies for proper taxation. On Sports News tonight, 15-year-old American qualifier Corey Garth causes a stunning upset by defeating five-time Wimbledon champion Venus Williams in the first round. And from Abuja, Inter-Party Advisory Council recommends more stringent conditions for the registration of political parties in Nigeria. At least four police officers have been killed, and two others injured after gunmen invaded a police station in Agudama, a Petyama community in Yenagua local government area of Bayelsa State. The divisional police officer of the station, a pregnant policewoman, and two others who were on duty were killed in the attack. The gunmen also carted away rifles, ammunition, and police uniforms from the station in an operation that lasted for close to an hour. Channel's television's correspondent reports that no civilian was killed in the attack. Abu Dhamma is a community on the Bahrain Equitiama Kingdom, a few kilometers away from Yenogwa, the capital of Bayelsa State. It's not the best of times for officers and men of the Agudama Equitiama police station in Yenagoa local government area of Bayelsa State. As persons suspected to be gunmen attacked the facility on Monday, leaving in their wake sad tales of death and destruction. A visit to the station reveals that four police officers were killed, while two others were seriously injured with these bloodstains and empty bullet shells, all testaments to the ugly incident. During his visit to the station, the Bielsa State Commissioner for Youth gives an insight into what transpired while also condemning the incident in its entirety. The information that uh, we gathered was that they came um, after attacking the, the police station, they went to the armory and carted away arms. Um, it's terrible what we saw here uh, and the way these persons were murdered. For me, I think that... Uh, uh, I think there was a premeditated uh, um, um, plan to come here and uh, carry out that action on particular police officers, which probably led to the others that they also uh, killed. Another resident of Agudama Ekpetiyama community also condemns the invasion, but believes that the establishment of state police will help in curbing such crimes. We we'll call on the federal government. They should look critically in the state police. Let them do something tangible that will secure the lives and property of the people of the Kwechama Kingdom. While the community is left to mourn the dead and take care of the injured, it is hoped that everything will be done to ensure that those behind this invasion are brought to justice, no matter how long, no matter how long it takes. Meanwhile, the Inspector General of Police has ordered a massive manhunt for the perpetrators of the crime. IGP Mohammed Adamu immediately ordered the deployment of crack of direct detectives from the IGP Intelligence Response Unit. That's the IRT, the Forensic and Homicide Section of the FCID and Special Operatives of the Marine Police Department to Yenagua to complement the efforts of the Bayelsa State Police Command in carrying out discrete investigation into the unfortunate incident. Mr. Adamu also condoles with the families of the four corps who paid the supreme price in the service 
of the Fatherland, describing the incident as a classic example of the risk and sacrifices the police are exposed to in their daily task of protecting Nigerians. And apart from the attacks in Bayelsa State, the Amos State Police Command also recorded a similar attack, allegedly by suspected cultists. But without a loss of life, the bandits stormed the police station in Otoku community in Obo, local government area of the state, cutting away firearms and burning down the station. Imo State Police authorities told Channels Television that hoodlums arrived at the police station at about 2 p.m., sacked the few policemen on duty, and carted away their firearms. More stories now. The controversy trailing the setting up of Ruga settlements across states by the federal government is still generating concerns. While some youths in Plateau and Taraba states are protesting against the plan, which the government claims will help resolve farmers herders' conflict. The protesters believe that the Ruga project will destroy the peaceful coexistence amongst various groups. Youths in Taraba State on the streets of Jalingo protesting against the federal government's plan to establish Ruga settlements across states to resolve the farmers herders' conflict. They insist cattle ranching remains the best option in settling clashes between farmers and the herders. The youth in Taraba have, in one voice, condemned in all approval by the federal government for Ruga settlement in some local government areas in Taraba state. The local government are Sardona, Ibi, Lao, and Zing. We describe, we, describe, we describe this coin idea as a misplace of priority in the face of poverty, insecurity, armed robbery, banditry, and increased unemployment facing the society. The decision made by the federal government in regards to the Ruga is an effort to abolish the, an ex existing law which has been established by Taraba state government as an anti-grazing law. In neighboring plateau states, some groups condemn the Ruga initiative. They believe it's a plot for land grabbing. This plan is tilted towards favoring a particular ethnic group above others in a country which belongs to us all. We see this as an act to displace indigenous natives from their ancestral lands and settlements under the guise of government scheme. The community is going to be affected by the Ruga settlements. We're not consulted. There are laws in this country. The constitution of, the, of Nigeria says the allocation of land has to be done by state governors. The federal government has not done that. The protesters say the Ruga project is a threat to the peace existing between various ethnic groups in the states, insisting it should be discouraged. In the same vein, they're appealing for a quick solution to the crisis to satisfy all parties. And while the protest continues, Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong has been speaking on the claims that the federal government is forcefully taking land from states for the Ruga project, and he says that it is not true. Mr. Lalong spoke to State House correspondents after meeting with President Muhammad Buhari. He said that participation of the states that, incite, that in, indicate interest in the plot is um, voluntary. Uh, the governors believe that uh, the governor rather believes that the project will address the farmers' herders' clashes and create employment. That thing should not be anything that will bring controversy. For the level of for the level of sensitization that we already met, I'm a member of the security, the food security committee, and a member of the herdsman farmers committee. We've gone a long way on this issue. And we've said that the only solution that can address some of these insecurity issues between herdsmen and farmers is the ranching policy. Those states applied. Those states said, we have lands for it. It's not federal government that is imposing it on any state. To be the benefit of Mr. President, the President has not imposed that on any state. It was voluntary. And they said any state that is prepared to do that to address the issue of insecurity in his state should come out and apply. So some of these tests applied and were at the level of the pilot scheme. 
and some mischief makers will start bringing terms to cause confusion. This is a policy that we felt that it, it is not only for the uh, economic sense, but it's also going to address insecurity. And so if it's going to address this insecurity in the period of serious security that we have in the nation, then federal government will come and assist for those who want to do it. Let's get more insight into this controversial subject. And we're now being joined by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Malam Garwishia, who want to thank you so much indeed for joining us on the News at 10. Could you clarify, if you will, what this Rugat settlement plan is about to at least to an extent, douse the ongoing controversy around it. Well, uh, let me say that uh, Ruga settlement plan is the same thing as, as ranching, as proposed by many stakeholders, including some state governments that have promulgated anti-grazing laws uh, you know, to the effect that they, uh, they had banned that practice in favor of cattle ranching. So cattle ranching is the same thing as Ruga. It's six and a half a dozen. What really is the difference? Why is the federal government introducing it? It is being introduced in order to stop the roaming of cattle, which had been attended by incidents of frequent clashes between farmers and the herders. So everyone had come to the conclusion that this was a bad practice, it was antiquated, and it's, it's out of time. No, settle them down and, and let them do their business there. So what is the federal government doing other than this? Asking state governments to apply if they wish to be a part of this. All of the one dozen states that have signed on to it have done so by application and they have met given criteria. There's no compulsion in all of this. It's all ideal politics that we are hearing. So we just heard the uh, Plateau State Governor, uh, Mr. Lalong, seem to be in agreement with what the government is saying in the establishment of this Ruga settlement. But the uh, youths in the state, in the particular local government area, are protesting. How is that going to work for Plateau State? What uh, needs to be done is for them to be enlightened. Because, as I said uh, from the beginning, if you say, I want six, I don't want half a dozen, you are just being redundant. People simply are being mobilized in order to cause popular disaffection in the country for reasons of politics. Otherwise, there is absolutely no issue here. Those who have a buy-in, those who are interested, come, let's do this thing together. If you want to stay out, stay out, that's your business. This is what the government is saying. You know, um, when you say that uh, 12 states have signed on to this, which states are those? By my agreement with the officials that we have received information, who had given us briefing, Minister of Agriculture ruled, they would rather that we keep silent about it. One thing I will tell you that the most outspoken critic of this policy, the governor of Benway, is not invited, he is not a part of it, he has no business meddling in this affair. If he has work to do, let him stay on his job and do it. Is this Riga, uh, Ruga settlement, is it, the, um, uh, is it the same thing, if you will? Is it the same thing as the National Livestock Transformation Plan, uh, the brainchild of the economic, uh, federal economic, I, national economic I think that is, is it? Is that what it is? You know, there are a lot of, is, is, these things are just matters of semantics. This country has a problem with, with herders who, who roam the, 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 you know, the, the, the entire country, length and breadth of the country, and they overrun farmland. And this causes disaffection and a fight. The government wants to stop this. So settle them down in one place. Provide all of the infrastructure they need. As a matter of fact, markets will come to these Ruga settlements or ranches, if you want to call them that. There will be the establishment of meat processors. There will be the use and the utilization of byproducts, including sanitary wares that will be manufactured from hooves and the cow horns. So there's, a lot of, there's going to be a lot of business and the money in this thing. This is not confined to Fulani. It's a business open to all Nigerians who wish to be a part of it. Now, um, uh, let's get some more clarification because as we saw those uh, protests in, uh, just, uh, in Plateau State, 
We also had uh, reports of a uh, protest in Bainway State where a signpost was mounted in a particular area, uh, seeming to suggest that that area has been earmarked for the ranches, or should I say the Ruga now, to be established. Would you say the due process was followed in that regard? As, as I said, my agreement with the briefing I got from agriculture officials, I will not name these 12 states that I involved, but one thing I can tell you is Benue is absolutely absent from this table. They, are, they didn't apply and they have not been invited. So, but the thing is that, you know, the nature of politics in that place, people had used this ethnic cleavage to gain power. They need it to stay in power because they have no answers for the problems of their people. You know, uh, Mr. Garba, uh, when I asked you earlier about uh, those states, those 12 states that you said uh, are signing on to this, don't you feel that the Nigerian people deserve to know those states that you say have signed up to this? I, I agree with you. But maybe in due course, all of these things, in any case, you know that the federal government of Nigeria has approved funding for this project. So already in some of these states, work is going on. They have started mobilizing Niger. A lot of work is going on there. So I, I believe that in a matter of time, all of these things. Now, but, but because the entire opposition to this is based on politics and blackmail and, and, and the promotion of ethnic hatred, that's, that's the whole idea. So perhaps the idea of our informants is that let's protect those people who are cooperating with the government of Nigeria in solving a problem that worries everyone. Why do you expose them to hatred? That's the whole idea. The Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Malam Garbashio, we must thank you so much indeed for throwing more light on this very controversial issue. Many thanks indeed. In part two, after the break, former President Chief Olusego Basojo calls for effective management of Nigeria's diversity to ensure the country's development. Stay with us.